In this example, we are given a circular plate, a uniform circular plate of radius 2R. And then a smaller circle of radius R is cut out of the plate. The question is, what is the center of mass of the remaining figure? So, in other words, we need to find the center of mass of this shaded figure. The radius of the big circle again is 2R, the radius of the small circle is R, and this is the center of the bigger circle. Uh, well, in order to find the center of mass of that uh, blue shaded figure, let's introduce the y and the x-axis. So this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis. Uh, the y-axis has to be tangential to that circle and it should pass through the center of the bigger circle. So it goes like this. So this is my y-axis. Well, um, clearly, because of the symmetry of the problem, the center of mass of this blue figure has to be along the x-axis. In other words, the y-coordinate of the center of mass of that blue figure is equal to zero. The question is, what is now the x-coordinate of that center of mass? To find that, let's think of this problem in a slightly different way. Let's say that we actually have a complete big circle, which consists of two parts. One part, which is this blue, blue color figure, and then the other part is this one, the green color small circle. Okay, so the big circle consists of two parts again this blue figure and this green small circle. The center of mass of the big circle, the center of mass of the big circle is therefore equal to the center of mass of the of this figure, let's call it 1, times mass of the first figure, plus the center of mass of this figure 2, which is in green color, times mass of the second figure, divided by the total mass, which is m1 plus m2. This is the general form for the center of mass of a system. So now, again, XCM with the subscript B stands for the center of mass of the big circle. Well, first of all, we know that the plate is uniform. And therefore, if you think of this big circle with the green circle inside, clearly, from the symmetry, the center of mass of the big circle has to be in, at the origin. So in other words, if x, c, and b is actually equal to zero. Moreover, because the plate is uniform, the mass of whatever figure we cut out from that plate has to be proportional to the area of that figure. Because the mass, because the plate is uniform, so the mass has to be proportional to the area. From this point of view, we can rewrite this equation as follows. We can say that 0 on this side is equal to x center of mass of the first figure times the area of the first figure plus x center of mass of the second figure times the area of the second figure divided by the total area. So now we can substitute for these variables. Well, let's look first at XCM2. XCM2 is the center of mass of the green small circle. 
Well, clearly, the center of mass of that circle is at the origin of that small circle. In other words, x is equal to minus r, because this is the origin for the uh, coordinates. So x cm2 is equal to minus r. So this is minus r. What about area of the second circle? Area of the second circle is equal to pi r squared. So we have pi r squared here. x of the first figure is unknown. This is what we're looking for. Area of the first figure. So now let's calculate for a1. a1 is the area of this blue figure. It is the total area of the big circle minus the area of the small circle. So the total area of the big circle is pi times 2r squared. The area of the small circle is pi r squared. And you get 3 pi r squared. So a1 is 3 pi r squared. And x c m1 is what we're looking for. So clearly from this equation you get x c m1 3 pi r squared minus r times pi r squared equals 0. So e x c m1 is actually equal to r over 3. So the center of mass of this blue figure is somewhere here so that this distance here is equal to r over 3. So finally, you can write the x and y coordinates of the center of mass for the first figure as follows r over 3 and 0. That's it.